Reflection and refraction have to do when light is passing through a surface between one medium and another medium. So we might call this medium one, and we could call this medium two. So we could have some incoming light that's coming in like this. And here's our incoming light. Just to be concrete, we might say the first medium was air and the second medium was water. But there could be any two different substances that the light could travel through. Okay, now uh, we need to talk about what the angle of incidence is. Now, um, this right here, this line is the surface. This line is the incoming light. What do we call this dashed line here, though? This is what we call the normal. We know a normal is something that's perpendicular. Well, this line is perpendicular to the surface, so we would call that the normal. And it turns out that in optics, we usually measure angles with the normal. We don't measure angles with the surface. So we're not really going to focus very much on this angle over here, unless the problem specifically talks about it. We're usually going to focus on this angle with the normal. <coughs> That's actually an easy mistake to make, to focus on the angle with the surface. So we have to get into the habit of drawing the normal. Let's say this incoming light is coming in at a 20 degree angle. So this isn't drawn to scale. But let's say we're coming in at 20 degrees. Now, some of the light is going to be reflected from the surface. Some of the light is going to be reflected from the surface, and then it will bounce off like this. We could call this the outgoing reflected light. And we would call this 20 degrees the angle of incidence. The angle of incidence is the angle that the incoming light makes with the normal. Now we need to use science research and science knowledge to know what is going to be the angle that the reflected light makes over here? If the light comes in at a 20 degree angle with the normal, what will be the angle that it goes out at? I don't know if you've picked, this, picked that up yet from your course. Do you know what the outgoing angle would be here? It would be 20 degrees. Okay. So this is not a very complicated aspect of science knowledge. The, uh, the law of reflection is very simple. The angle of incidence is the same as the angle of reflection. The angle of incidence is the same as the angle of reflection. If you come in at 20, you go out at 20. So if we call this angle theta 1, what would we call this angle? Theta 1 prime. Now, in terms of theta 1, how big would this one be? We would just call it theta 1. Oh. We don't need two different names because they're the same angle. So the law of the reflection is that this angle is the same as this angle. OK. So reflection is pretty easy. The hard part, though, is that some of the light will be transmitted through the surface. Okay. And when it's transmitted through the surface, it bends. And this angle down here, which we could call Maybe theta 3, I don't know, uh, or theta 2. I'll call it theta 2. This angle down here, we could call this the transmitted light. Here's our transmitted light. Well, this angle does not have to be the same as theta 1. Here the light's going to bend. Uh, so we have to know how to use Snell's law to work this out. All right, well, this is going to be based on the index of refraction. It takes a little while to explain that idea of the index of refraction. Uh, so let's start with the speed of light. The speed of light in a vacuum. There's a special symbol for the speed of light in a vacuum. Do you know what the symbol is for the speed of light in a vacuum? Is it C? Yeah, like E equals MC squared. That's the speed of light in a vacuum. Now remember, that's the fastest that anything can go. You've probably heard this idea. Nothing can go faster than the speed of light in a vacuum. Let's think about what happens to light when it goes into a material medium. What happens to light when it goes into a material medium? Well, the material medium, medium slows the light down. When light goes into a medium, it gets slowed down.
when light moves into a material medium, uh, it gets slowed down. Uh, that's kind of intuitive. It, the stuff gets in the way, so it can't move as fast. So now we have to, uh, to use a different symbol for its speed. Now we can call the speed v. By the way, what we're really doing here is both covering this chapter and the next chapter as well. Because uh, the next chapter, uh, this uh, is also talking about the speed of light in different, media, in different mediums. So this will be important for our next chapter on the wave nature of light. Thank you. All right, so the speed here uh, turns into V. So notice we only want to use C when we're in a vacuum. If we're not in a vacuum, we just use V for the speed of light. OK. Uh, how much is it going to get slowed down? Well. We can use the index of refraction to figure that out. That gives us the equation n equals c over v. This gives us the index of refraction over here. Okay. Um, so what does the index of refraction tell us? Does it tell us <coughs> how much the light has been slowed down? Or does it tell us how much the light, uh, does it tell us kind of how quickly the light is going or how slowly? But well, we could work that out on paper. Suppose that n was big. How could n get big? n can only get big if this right-hand side is big, right? But that means v has to be small, because it's in the denominator. Do you see that logic? If n is big on the left, v has to be small on the right, because a big denominator would make this big. So there's an inverse relationship between n and v. This is another example of thinking on paper. What this means is n tells you how much the medium has slowed the light down. n tells us how much the material has slowed the light down. N is our index of refraction. It tells us how much the light is going to slow down. Uh, let's think that through a little bit more. We know that the biggest that V can be is C. Mm -hmm. V can't be bigger than C. You can't go faster than the speed of light. That's a, there's a maximum value for this denominator. If there's a maximum value for the denominator, does that mean that N has a maximum or a minimum? Well, when V is very big, N would be very small. So that means there's a minimum N. And what is the minimum n? Well, that happens when v is equal to c. Well, if v was equal to c, n would be 1. So the minimum n is 1. n is always bigger than or equal to 1. n is always bigger than or equal to 1. What does it mean when n is equal to 1? It means that the light hasn't been slowed down at all. And the bigger n is, the more the light has been slowed down. Okay. So what would n be in a vacuum? Well, we know that in a vacuum, in a vacuum, what's the speed of light? C. So what would n be? 1. So in a vacuum, n equals 1. That makes sense, because remember that n was supposed to be how much the light got slowed down, but the vacuum doesn't slow it down at all. Okay. So this is the smallest that n could be. Now, it turns out that air hardly slows light down. Air hardly slows the light down at all. So in the air, n would also be approximately 1. n is going to be approximately 1 in the air because the air hardly slows it down at all. Now this is very important because when you're solving <coughs> problems, when you're solving test problems and exam problems, you're hardly ever going to do an optics problem in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. But almost always, you're going to be dealing with air. Okay. Well, anytime you're dealing with air, you know that n is 1. So again, this is a case where a student can uh, despair too soon. The student might say, this isn't fair. They didn't tell me what the n is. Well, if they tell me that you're in the air, we're supposed to know that n equals 1 for the air. Okay, so these are some important ideas about the index of refraction. One thing the index of refraction tells us is it tells us how much the light has been slowed down. But there's another very important, so this is very useful if you're trying to calculate questions about the speed of light. 
if you want to know how much the light has been slowed down in the medium, you would do that using this equation over here. For example, if n equals 2, that would tell you that um, the speed of light is only half what it would be in a vacuum. Uh, so what does this stand for? This is the index of refraction of a particular medium. And what does V stand for? This is the speed of light in that particular medium. This is the speed of light in the medium that N is for. And what does C stand for? The speed of light in the vacuum.